Everyone, it's time that we figure out what is going on when we look at the stars. And we're going to do that by creating what we call the HR diagram. Probably the single most important graph in all of astronomy. Probably. So to do this activity, all you really need to do is open up our website, get to our HR diagram, make sure you open up a piece of graph paper. And what you can see here is that on our graph, we've got the absolute magnitude on the y-axis. So that is what? How bright a star really is. So how do we know that? What do we do to the stars to get their true brightness? Well, we look at their apparent brightness, the way they look from Earth, then move them according to a certain distance. We put them all at the same distance, and they then will show their true brightness with respect to one another. So you can see on this graph here that the sun is actually a positive 4.8 instead of the negative 26 that we see it in our normal sky. Mm -hmm. So by moving it further away, you made it much dimmer in its real magnitude versus what we see from Earth. And on the x-axis down there, you can see we've got the temperature scale, the OBAFGKM. So that tells us what? OB a fine girl kiss me. Which means? How hot the star is. So the hottest stars are? O. O stars, OB stars. You can see up at the very top there, there's kind of the Roy G. Biv. O and B stars and A stars even are bluish in color. And we get towards the KM spectrum, we get? Red. Oranges and reds. Mm -hmm. So you can see the sun sitting right there in the middle, being a 4.8 magnitude and around a G2 class star. How do I know this, all this information? Click on the HR diagram data, and you will see a table with about 33 stars listing their apparent magnitude, their absolute magnitude, and spectral type. Now, we don't really only need two pieces of this information for the HR diagram. We need those last two columns which are absolute magnitude and the spectral type. So now we got that, let's graph. So after we plotted all 33, this, this is it. This is the single most important graph in all of astronomy. Yeah, it looks like a bunch of dots. But if you really want to put this together, what it does is it tells you the spectral types of all these stars and it starts to group them together. And the groups are what's really important here. So the trend that astronomers are seeing that stars like the sun, you can see that the sun has maybe average brightness and average temperature. What about these guys down here? Well, they're a little cooler, for sure, because they're M-type stars, and they don't seem to be as bright. That makes sense. The cooler you are, the probably the less bright you are. What about these guys way up here? There's a lot of groupings up here. Uh, very hot and also very bright. So we've got very hot stars that are bright, average stars that are not so bright, and then cool stars that are very dim. So everything right down the middle of this page here is stars like the sun, but on different temperature scales. Mm -hmm. And so we call that the main sequence. These are the main type of stars in the sequence of life cycle that we'll learn later. Then over here, we had some oddballs. If we were cold, we should be dim, but we have really cold stars that are really, really bright. How could that be possible? Well, we learned a couple of ways that stars can be brighter, and one of those ways is by size. These are really big stars. So if they're really big, we call those giants. And since they're reddish, orangish in color... Red giants? Red giants. So now we have a grouping of red giant stars up here in this top right. And then down here on the left, we have a couple stars here. What's going on with them? Well, they're not very bright, so maybe they're smaller. Probably a lot smaller. Because they're really hot, they should be pretty darn bright. But they're not so bright, so maybe they're little. So if they're hot, then they're probably whitish blue. Mm -hmm. So white tiny stars, we'll call them white dwarfs. So the HR diagram, the reason it's the most important graph you can ever get is when you uh, plot one of these for any star cluster, what you get is this sampling. You get this stretch down the middle called the main sequence. We get stars that are up in the upper right called red giants. And we get some stars down in the left corner called white dwarfs in almost every star collection that we see. So we can categorize any star 
just by putting it on this chart. And there's one more little grouping that's not as evident because it's kind of close to the main sequence, and that's when uh, the blue stars are monstrous. So if you were to look up in the top, almost the top left corner, you'll see some rogue dots up there that stand out. Those are the blue supergiants like Rigel. So blue supergiants will be extremely bright and extremely hot. Yes. So now that we know that there's these different types of stars, we can then kind of piece together how stars live, how they were born, and how they ultimately die. Indeed. We'll talk about that next time.